It's been more than 60 days since we have lived under the stay-at-home order. That's more than two months. Next week will be nine weeks, and I have a simple question for you. Have you changed? And how have you changed? We've all changed, right? Things that we used to take for granted, we don't take for granted anymore. My daily ritual before this pandemic broke out here in America was to go to my favorite diner for breakfast every single morning. But that vanished within a day. And now I have made more than 60 different breakfasts for Mary Kay and me. That's called change. We all have stories like this one. This morning, I don't want to talk about just any change. I want to talk about the changes that have impacted your Christian life. You know, back when I was in school, we would receive a report card every nine weeks. Well, next week, this coming week, will be your ninth week in this pandemic and this stay-at-home order. Over those nine weeks, are there changes in your life that now you can see new directions, new pathways, new habits, all that cause you to be closer to the Lord Jesus. There should be changes like this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, from the Good News Translation, says this, Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise, and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 from the Good News Translation. I deliberately picked that Good News Translation version because normally, in most of our Bibles, this word test is translated temptation. That's probably how you have heard it. No temptation has come to you that you can't bear. This actual Greek word for test or temptation is the word pirazo. That means to make proof of, to attempt, to test, to try, <laughs> to prove. To test would be the positive way to look at it. To tempt would be the negative way to look at it. And both are exactly the same word. Over this nine-week period of time, you have been in a parazo. Each one of us has. And so nine weeks in, I am asking you, how is the test going? What has been proven in your life? Can you look at these past two months and say, yes, I can see Jesus more in my life. I can see the changes in my way of living. I can see changes in my habits and my desires more toward Jesus. Of course, we should always be doing a checkup for our spiritual life because we are always either moving closer, becoming more like Christ, or less like Christ. This, after all, is what it really means to be a Christian it means I have decided to walk like Christ, to become like him as much as I possibly can. It's not so much, becoming a Christian, is not so much about the moment that I made the choice to follow him in the beginning, as much as it is the many choices I make since then to keep following him. So, well, boy, where do you get that from, Mark? Well, let's take a look at several verses. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same manner in which he walked. Or this from 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Paul writes, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Or this from Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. So today, 
I'd like to have you begin an examination report card uh, for yourself over this nine week period of time. And I'm going to challenge you in five areas of your spiritual life. This week, I'd like you to ask these questions of yourself and of your relationship to Christ. I challenge you to do this in your prayer time, not just on your own. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to examine you and to help you to fairly consider these changes in this nine weeks of your life. You see, on our own, without the Holy Spirit, we will err naturally to one side or the other. Some of us will just be way too easy on ourselves at a time when God truly wants to challenge us to try harder. And some of us just naturally live in guilt mode, which is equally wrong. Pray within the safety and the honesty of God's love for a self-evaluation that encourages you to move toward Christ. All right, are you ready for the five? Here we go. Here's the first challenge. Do I see God's Spirit doing a new thing in my life. Our first question is really simply an acknowledgement of everything we have been talking about so far. Our Heavenly Father would never waste this challenging time in our world without using it for our good. That's just what He does. So can I see God working in me? Can I see God changing me? to become more like Christ. We read in Isaiah 43, 19, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now I don't have to see God working in me in order for God to accomplish his work in me. God will work in me regardless of whether I recognize it or not. However, it is a sign of spiritual maturity to recognize that God does work, that he never wastes an opportunity for his children to become more like Jesus. So my challenge for you this week with this first question is for you to cooperate with God's spirit within you. Pray this prayer, Lord, I know you are working in me, and I surrender myself to you and to your will. Help me to become more like you. All right, that's our first challenging report card question. Here is our second. How is my flexibility of life? Am I learning to move with God? How is my flexibility of life? Am I learning to move with God? One of the hardest things to learn in this Christian life is this. I am not God. (laughs) And neither are you. I am not in control. Not everything in life goes my way. So can I enjoy the Lord's presence And my entire life, regardless of whether things work out the way I want them to or not. For this question, we turn our attention to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. I used to not like Ecclesiastes 3 very much. It just seemed so hopeless to me. But now... I have exactly the opposite reaction. There is a right time for everything in life, including a right time for wrong things. Things I would prefer not happen. Things like sickness or aloneness or hunger or poverty or even death. I have learned from Ecclesiastes 3 that all of these not preferred happenings in my life and in yours are just for a season. And that, by the way, includes even death. 
can I be and can I learn to be flexible within God's Holy Spirit in my life to recognize the seasonality of these wrong or not preferred happenings? Can I recognize that God is always within me? Can I enjoy this moment with God even though this is not my preferred moment? Am I learning that this may be winter, but spring is coming? Here's our challenging report card question number three. How in my hope, how is my hope in the unchangeable nature of God? How is my hope in the unchangeable nature of God? The more things change, especially in that wrong or not preferred way that we were just talking about from Ecclesiastes 3, the more things change, the more I need to know, especially in the down times of life, the more I need to know that there is an anchor of hope in my life. God himself does not change, and nothing Nothing need come between me and God. The entire Hebrews chapter 6 is all about this. The veil, that very heavy curtain between God and man, was torn in two at the very time of Jesus' death on the cross. And so, in the tough times of life, we can know this from Hebrews 6.19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Now we all know that an anchor is dropped by a ship in the middle of a storm. We all need an anchor when the storms rage in our life. Do you recognize God's anchor during this coronavirus pandemic? Have you been able to hope in him. You will recognize it as a sustained hope when there is no other reason for hope other than God. How's it gone for you these nine weeks? Has your hope increased or decreased over these 60 days? Here's challenging question number four. Do I recognize the new creation in my life? Has the old gone? Has the new come? This is the very promise of salvation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So how can I know? Let's start first off by saying that none of us perfectly get this right all the time. There's no room for perfectionism on this side of glory. The moment that we think we have arrived, that is the very moment we have to begin working on our humility. Now, with that being said, there are ample lists in the New Testament in which we might check ourselves for the old being gone and the new coming. As some of you know, I've been camping out in Colossians chapter 3 ever since last Sunday. In Colossians 3, here are some things that we should be putting to death according to Colossians 3, 5 through 9. Let me just read it to you. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Now, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to one another, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image 
of its creator. My friends, I am concerned for you and for the safety of your souls. If you are not self-examining honestly with the Lord's Holy Spirit today, I recognize that this same testing of the stay-at-home order that can provide us the opportunity to change in order to be closer to God can also be that other opportunity as well. That is, it could give us the opportunity to hide out, to hide out away from one another and to hide out from God's spirit. And I plead with you to not allow this backwards movement in your spiritual life. This past week, I learned that the local beer distributors here in Mansfield, Ohio, are selling more beer than at any other time in history. There has never been a more profitable time for the beer distributors in all of history. There's been no Christmas. There's been no Thanksgiving. No other pastime has ever seen more sales of alcoholic beverages. Now, don't get me wrong. I am no teetotaler myself, but I do know that God's word instructs us not to be drunk. More to our point today, this is not a time for our senses to be dulled. This is the time for us to lean into God's Holy Spirit, a time for us to be more aware of our life in Christ, not less. And so we want this new creation changes to be moving in a positive direction. And remember, we can't take off the bad habits without replacing them with good habits. So do I see the positive changes growing in me, such as what we read in Colossians 3, 12 through 14? Positive changes like compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This coronavirus stay-at-home time has been the perfect opportunity to grow closer to one another and with those you love. This has been the time when we have been given the chance to prove our compassion, to prove our kindness, our humility, and our patience. You know why? Because now that we are staying at home, we have to work harder at it. Let me give you some examples. For example, we can't just show up at church physically these days like we used to be able to and just see church automatically happen. Now, this may be our preference because it's easier. Zoom is harder. We have to work at it. We have to prioritize it. Here's another example. I can't just go outside and mingle with other people like I used to be able to do. Now, compassion and kindness demand a mask. Not for me, but because I'm thinking of others before me. Or here's a third example. I don't just wade into political angry speech like I used to. This is no longer a political game. Lives are on the line. Jobs are on the line. Winning is no longer measured at the polling places, but now is measured in the hospitals and the employment, unemployment websites and at the food banks. So how do I make these outward changes in my life? If it's not automatic, if God doesn't just zap me by the trial upon me, how do I work with God's spirit to become more like Christ? Well, that leads us very nicely into our final challenging question number five for our report card this morning. Here it is. How has my mind and attitude changed toward my new life in Christ? How has my mind and my attitude changed toward my new life in Christ? 
Romans 12, 2 reminds us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Over these past 60 days, have I made the effort to change and renew my mind toward God and the changes that he wants me to make? Nothing will happen in the rest of my life until I make up my mind to change it. I have to be intentional. I have to want it. I have to make the effort. I have to be determined. That's all in my mind. And that only, of course, puts us back a step. So, okay, I have to change my mind before I change my life. So uh, how do I change my mind? By filling it with God and his word. That's both simple and profound. I had to be very careful about what I put into my mind. From the movies that I watch, to the books that I read, to the conversations that I have, to the friends that I make, each and every decision, each choice, does this help me renew my mind toward God or away from God? This is why I have challenged you so often to study God's word and to hang out with God's people. You see, the pattern of the world is all around you. You literally need to do nothing to be conformed to it. And if the last 60 days has been a time when you've done nothing to change, you will not have changed. In fact, you could potentially have even moved backwards, away from the Lord. For you, this sermon could be a call for repentance, a 60-day, nine-week report card, honest evaluation and appraisal. This may be your last call to know that you are floating away from God and you are floating away from his love and his hope and his presence. Or, Maybe, and I hope this is true, maybe you can honestly say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for growing me. Thank you for helping me to depend even more upon you. Thanking, thank you, Lord, for helping me to help others in their love and their dependence upon you. Thank you for your encouragement to me that I may encourage others. I am hungry for you, Lord, and I want even more of you in my life. How is your spiritual report card this morning?